On the night of December 21st, 2020, Donald Trump facing potentially the end of his presidency held a secret meeting. At least 15 members of the House joined in discussing a plan to object to the electoral results and challenge them come January 6th, the day a joint session of Congress is held to count the electoral votes. Only this night, something was different. Not only was it an 800 year cycle of Jupiter and Saturn aligning, creating the Christmas star, but one man at this meeting truly held substantial power. And that man was Mike Pence. Okay, I'll drop the bit. It does sound a bit crazy or a bit enticing, and maybe something will come of it. We'll see. But yes, Donald Trump held a meeting with many members of Congress talking about objecting to the results of the election. The electoral votes happened on the 14th. January 6th is when the vote will happen. But as the media is reporting that Donald Trump met with these people, they're leaving out the most important man in the room, Mike Pence. That's the point I was trying to make. You see, on January 6th, Mike Pence is the one who actually counts the votes. He's going to hold them up and say, I count here by this and we'll see who wins. I think it's kind of crazy that the incumbent vice president actually gets to count the votes to determine whether or not he can keep power. You know, I think there's a lot of incentive for someone like Mike Pence to actually fight on his own behalf. And perhaps he will. Trump can't do much, but he is certainly fighting. And while we're seeing many House members say they will challenge this, and boy, are there a lot, we still need some senators. While it's possible that Rand Paul and Kelly Loeffler will be the senators to join in creating that objection, will it even matter if there's no legal grounds to actually challenge these votes? As most of you know, Donald Trump and his campaign have been filing a a series of lawsuits. Not as many as the left will tell you. They'll say Trump lost 50 lawsuits. Okay, those are other people. Trump has certainly filed many lawsuits, but not nearly as many as the media claims. And he's actually been successful one or two times or so. But even with these lawsuits, they've been rejected mostly on procedural grounds. So by what legal standing will they have to actually overturn the results of the election or give Mike Pence legal justification for saying I throw out, say, Pennsylvania? Well, I can't tell you exactly uh, what their reasoning will be, but I can tell you Trump campaign files long shot Supreme Court challenge to Biden's Pennsylvania win. You see, when I saw this, I can't tell you definitively what the goal is, but I kind of want to put the pieces together. Why would Donald Trump file a long shot SCOTUS challenge for Pennsylvania? Perhaps that's what this meeting is all about. A strategy meeting with other Republicans, Trump supporting Republicans on what they need to actually file a challenge. And just the day before this meeting, Trump filed yet another legal challenge. But maybe this one won't be heard. And maybe that's the point. I know a lot of people say it's stupid to argue that losing is winning. And Trump supporters seem to think that losing is the best path forward. It's not. What they're arguing in some of these meetings or or one of the arguments for the objections is that the Supreme Court has refused to hear their case. And because of that, they want the American people to hear the case. And that's what they're going to do on January 6th. Maybe that's the plan. I don't know for sure, but I can tell you one thing outside of all of this is that Mitch McConnell certainly not in on it. He is opposing Donald Trump, and that's because the Republican Party is an establishment political apparatus. Trump is fighting against it. So we will see if he can muster the courage, the strength and the political willpower among his supporters to make that difference and actually find a way to win. But let's read the story and see exactly what the meeting was. But before I do, let me just entice you with some baity information. Mike Pence actually said recently at a Turning Point USA conference, we're going to keep fighting to overturn the election, saying he actually was saying we're going to we're not going to stop fighting until every illegal ballot is out and every legal ballot is in. They're still fighting. Maybe Mike Pence was just trying to rile up the crowd or maybe Mike Pence is actually the guy who's going to be in that joint session who says, no, Donald Trump won. But let's read the news before we get started. Head over to TimCast.com slash donate. If you'd like to support my work, there are many ways you can give. Got a P.O. box. You want to send me some stuff. But the best thing you can do is share this video. It really does help. I don't have the marketing department like CNN or Fox News. And if you think I do a good job, seriously, sharing is huge. If every single person who watched every one of my videos or just this one shared it right when they started watching it, just take the URL, put it on whatever platform, I'd be bigger than CNN overnight. 
If you think I'm worthy of that and you think the content is good, then please consider supporting the channel. Otherwise, just like, subscribe to the notification bell, and let's read what's up with this meeting. And then what's up with Mike Pence's statements about fighting to change the results? Fox News reports President Trump Monday huddled with members of Congress to discuss plans to object to President-elect Joe Biden's Electoral College win and force a debate on allegations of voter fraud. Representative-elect Marjorie Taylor Greene from Georgia attended the White House meeting and said there's growing support for GOP lawmakers from the House and Senate to challenge the election results when a joint session of Congress inter- uh, convenes on January 6th to certify the results. The vote was 306 to 232 in Biden's favor. We will be raising objections to the Electoral College votes for Joe Biden for multiple states, Green told Fox News. Green said the White House meeting included Trump, Vice President Pence, there it is, Trump's legal team, and about 15 House members, including GOP reps Jim Jordan of Ohio, Andy Biggs of Arizona, Mo Brooks of Alabama, Matt Gates of Florida, and Louis Gohmert of Texas. Congressional rules require a House member and senator to simultaneously challenge a state's electoral slate when they jointly convene on January 6th. Green said senators are on board, though she declined to name them publicly. Quote, some people just haven't totally gone public yet, but we're going to have a lot of people on board and we definitely have senators, Green told Fox News. This is going to be historic and the amount of evidence is overwhelming. Alabama Senator-elect Tommy Tuberville has raised the possibility of challenging the the Electoral College, but GOP Senate leaders have discouraged it. Senate Majority Whip John Thune from South Carolina said he hoped Tuberville won't do it because the election has been litigated over and over and it was time to move on. I don't think it's good for the country, Thune told reporters last week. Trump, however, is rallying his base to fight for him. And I got to tell you, my friends, Trump doesn't have to do all that much. We all saw the, the, the COVID relief bill, they called it, the omnibus spending package, $2.3 trillion of good old American taxpayer money at a time when we are at our most desperate and dropping to our knees as our businesses burn down around us figuratively and literally in some cases. And we say, please do something to help us. Nof- it has never been more evident that the people in Congress do not represent the people, that the, the senators do not represents the will of the states when they vote to give $10 million for Pakistani gender programs and you only get $600 of your own money. They take it from you and they are giving it out in foreign aid at a time when we are desperate and our economy is, in, is facing dire straits. They don't represent us. And so I assure you, people will be angry and looking for something to change what's about to happen. Maybe Joe Biden will be that hero everyone thinks huh? on the left. Is that what they think? I doubt it. It's the only people who are opposing this. In fact, people like Jim Jordan, he voted no on this. And Matt Gates voted no. I'm pretty sure Matt Gates also voted no on this. There are very few politicians who actually stood up and said this bill is ridiculous. You and your wealth and your family's wealth and your future are being extracted. And it's been that way for a long time. Trump called into a Turning Point USA event where he insisted he won in a landslide and encouraged the Justice Department and members of Congress to step up and support him. Quote, we are fighting really for the country because this election, we won this election in a landslide, Trump said. It's all documented. The problem is we need a party that is going to fight. And we have some great congressmen and women that are doing it. And we have others, some great fighters, but we won this in a landslide. They know it. And we need backing from like the Justice Department and other people have to finally step up. Trump has repeatedly alleged that he beat Biden. This we all understand. In addition to winning the Electoral electoral College, Biden won the popular vote by 7 million votes. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows confirmed that Trump met with the lawmakers in the Oval Office and they were preparing to fight back against mounting evidence of fraud, Meadows tweeted. On January 6th, the House and Senate convened jointly in the House chamber. Pence would co-preside over the session in his capacity as president of the Senate alongside alongside House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Pence's term doesn't expire until January 20th. If there is a House and Senate member appealing a slate's uh, a state's slate of electors, the joint session of Congress is dissolved and the White and the House and Senate meet separately for two hours to debate a contested state's electoral vote. Each body then votes whether to accept or reject the state's slate of electoral votes. Then the House and Senate reconvene in the joint session. My friends, I do not see any way that you're going to get the likes of, you know, like Murkowski or whatever, 
these these centrist Republican types or moderate Republican types, they're not going to vote for this. Will the Republicans actually have the majority to pull this off? I don't think so. So my understanding is that Purdue won't be there. Loeffler might be there because of the way the Georgia election works. I'm not entirely sure. I don't think they'll be able to pull it off. You would need the Republican House, I'm sorry, the Republican Senate to say, I have, we, we've, we've confirmed the objection. And that then you would need the Democratic House to, I guess, also confirm the objections. It's just, it's not going to happen. Now, possibly because we saw the Republican electoral candidates who did not get voted in, they held procedural votes in the event they actually, you know, the results are overturned in some capacity. Maybe Mike Pence argues, well, the state legislatures approved these. The governors approved these. Which ones do I count? There's actually precedence that he just says neither. And maybe, maybe, but probably not something will happen. They say a state's slate of electoral electoral votes is only tossed if both the House and Senate vote to do so, with Democrats controlling the House and Senate uh, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell acknowledging Biden's win. It seems unlikely there would be enough votes to reject any state certification. Green said she intends to object and during floor debate debate present evidence of voter fraud. She points to White House advisor Peter Navarro's new report on election irregularities. She said the most important part of the meeting was basically to make sure that everything that we use is accurate, not just a rumor here and there, but actual real evidence of voter fraud. It has to be correct. She said Trump was in great spirits and he was grateful for the members who will be fighting for him in Congress. He deserves his day in court, but he's definitely going to have his day in Congress, she said. The people truly believe that they reelected President Trump, Green added. And uh, and as members of the House, we're doing what the people want. I, th- I think she is. I think you've got a bunch of mindless drone like establishment Republicans who are kind of just doing nothing. But sure. Now, whether or not Pence would actually intervene himself, I'm not entirely convinced. He is fighting for his own self-preservation, which makes things all the uh, all the more interesting in several states. I believe seven, the Republican electoral candidates cast procedural votes where they said in the event the results are changed, our votes are duly recorded and can be presented to Congress. In fact, they uh, according to Stephen Miller, they intend to send those to Congress. That doesn't mean it's going to matter. It doesn't mean they're they're certainly not official. But if the state legislatures say they are. They are, at least according to the Constitution. Mike Pence could at least argue, well, look, the state legislature said these are the votes. The governor certified these votes. What do I do? Mike Pence might choose not to count them, triggering a contingent election. I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. Let me just give you my prediction before we go forward and I show you more of what's going on. Because Mike Pence did say we are going to keep fighting. He said not until, you know, uh, every legal vote is counted. Every illegal vote is not counted. I think come January 6th, there's going to be objections. They're going to stand up and they're going to proclaim things and they're going to say, look at the evidence. Here's what's going on. And then the House will vote. No, they'll vote for Biden. The Senate will vote probably for Biden. And then because Republicans will defect as well. And then Mike Pence will count the votes and Joe Biden will win. And on that day, Joe Biden will be president elect. I can't predict the future. I can't see any other variables that might occur. So as of right now, based on what I'm reading, that seems to be the most likely outcome. Don't take my predictions as some kind of law. I have no idea. Ultimately, it could just pan out to be, you know, uh, a crazy. It, it could ultimately turn out to be something to- totally crazy. A meteor could crash and, and then dinosaurs come out, you know, space dinosaurs. Who knows what could happen? You know, Joe Biden could have a cardiac uh, episode and find himself unable to be inaugurated. I have no idea. But based on normalcy bias and everything that's happening, Mike Pence can claim we're going to keep fighting. But does he really mean it? I honestly do not believe so. And I'll tell you why. I've been saying it for the past several days. The Democrats come out and they'll propose a bill to burn down our house. And the Republicans say, we object. Only burn down the kitchen. That's the bit I've been using quite a bit. The idea is that instead of actually pulling in the direction of what their what their constituents want, All they do is pretend to oppose the Democrats, but don't actually do anything. The way I described it to some guy earlier was, imagine the Democrats are in a car driving full speed towards the cliff to the left, and Mitch McConnell is skiing the back of the car, but he's telling you he's actually pulling it, trying to make it stop. It's like, bro, you're just being dragged along with them. You're not doing anything to stop this. 
When are they going to propose an alternative to everything the Democrats are doing? When are they going to say, okay, we'll tell you what, our rebuttal to the stimulus is, we'll do the stimulus exactly as you want it if you include a provision forcing the economy to reopen tomorrow. They won't because Republicans only play on Democrat terms. So I'm sorry if I don't see the political willpower from the Republican Party. Now, Trump supporters, I think, have willpower, and that's who's standing up for Trump. There is one last Hail Mary effort. Trump campaign long shot uh, uh, Supreme Court challenge to Biden's Pennsylvania win. Maybe there's something here. Maybe what actually happens is that the Supreme Court finally takes up one of these cases and says, well, we're not going to rule the elections out, but we will say the legislature has to issue a, you know, a final say. Then, so, so, so the Supreme Court ultimately doesn't overturn this, but then maybe they instruct the, the state legislature to inform the federal government who they're voting for, and then they vote for Trump. Maybe SCOTUS instructs all of the states to do so. The likelihood that I think that happens is astronomically uh, is, is near nil. I, don't, I just don't see it happening at all. But I did wonder why it was that Trump filed this, and I rolled my eyes when he did. I've been through too much of this. I've looked at so many of these stories about Donald Trump and the lawsuits, and I just said, this, it, it, look, Trump's campaign has filed a series of suits. They've been rejected on procedural grounds. And then you had a bunch of Trump allies and Republicans file lawsuits, and ultimately it just nothing. Now, there's still some suits going through. We'll see how these things play out. Some of them are just patently absurd. But I have to wonder, the system is completely broken. It's, it's absolutely broken. When you see that COVID relief bill and that omnibus spending package, and you know that we are a suffering nation and they're sending $130 million for like breastfeeding programs or something and $10 million for Pakistani gender studies. Just where does this money come from? What are they buying? What value does this money have? No, it's just being extracted, taken from us. So now I, I totally get why there are many people who are demanding that Donald Trump win because it's only gotten worse. Now, this meeting Trump had was not the only thing he's talking about. You see, there was another meeting. The Guardian reports conspiracy theorist lawyer Sidney Powell spotted at White House again. Oh, <laughs> again. That's right, my friends. The first report was that Donald Trump was planning on appointing Sidney Powell as special counsel to investigate election fraud. That would be glorious. Absolutely amazing. I want and encourage this. No, I don't agree uh, with Sidney Powell in terms of her statements on Dominion and all those other things. I don't believe her accusations uh, on Smartmatic and Dominion and a bunch of these things, and I've looked into it. I know there are a lot of people who want it all to be true and believe it because they've seen a bunch of videos and stuff like that. Look, I, I, I just don't see it. I'm sorry, but that's okay. You know why? I want it to happen. Good. I actually think it'd be a good thing. Sidney Powell would get in there and kind of, you know, dig through the system a little bit. And I think it would be an improvement, even if she's wrong about Dominion voting systems and fraud or whatever is irrelevant. The fact that we would have someone who's very suspicious of it, digging through it is better than what we got from the DOJ already. I'm, I'm surprised, you know, when I see Bill Barr said, that, you know, his, his quote several weeks ago was, to date, we have not seen evidence that would have changed the res you know, results of the election. I can respect that. But why aren't you investigating any of this stuff? Because I'll tell you this, I have seen personal, personally, I've seen and corroborated evidence of what are described as potentially illegal ballots. The reason I put it that way is that's what it, the way it was described to me. It would be evidence of fraud. And I've seen it. It's from Matt Brainerd of the Voter Integrity Project. That needs an investigation now. The DOJ didn't give it to us. I think Sidney Powell would. And I'm not entirely sure what she would find, but I'll tell you this. Bill Barr recently said there is fraud in elections. It happens like every election. It's unfortunate, but not to the extent that it changed the results for me. OK, Bill, no problem. I would like those people to be arrested and charged. So we just say we're taking it seriously and we're going to stop the fraud. How about that? Why is that so hard? What's what with Sidney Powell? Trump might be leaving behind a well positioned asset to prevent this kind of uh, impropriety and, you know, a potential fraud, even if it doesn't reach some grandiose scale, it's a good thing. What's the worst thing that could happen? I know people on the left are going to be like, Trump's crazy. She's a conspiracy theorist. She's a special counsel, dude. What's she going to do? 
make recommendations for prosecutions that might get ignored, but still be able to show us evidence, uncover evidence, publish evidence, and help us get a little bit more transparency. That I actually like. I do. The Republican Party, meanwhile, I think is, uh, is, is going to fall apart. Donald Trump is the Republican Party. And I was, you know, I was talking to some people earlier, and I, I tell you, watching Mitch McConnell turn his back on Trump over and over and over again, watching McConnell brag, brag about this spending bill. And I'm like, you know what? You are just going to get angry people who turn on the Republican Party, make their own, and see it collapse. As much as right now we can say that the Republican Party is the party of Trump, there are still a lot of establishment uh, politicians and rhinos, Republicans in name only. They're still in, in positions of power. And with Trump set to leave, vacate the White House in you know the next month or so, these establishment politicians are excited and they're desperate to take back control. Many of the Republicans who voted no on the ridiculous omnibus bill probably just did it knowing it was going to pass anyway, and they can pretend to stand up for something. Many of them did it because they actually stand up for something. But ultimately, it won't be enough because two, uh, enough Republicans agreed with it. In the Senate, I think only six Republicans opposed it. And these are the establishment cronies that are fighting to take control. When 126 Republicans signed, uh, signed, signed on to this lawsuit from Texas, they probably, many of them knew it was going to fail. And so they said, I'll just say I support Trump to try and win. But these Trump supporters, the ones that you need to win, they don't care about you. They don't care about the Republican Party. They care about Donald Trump winning, which brings me to the biggest question I have in all of this. I wonder, I wonder if the Republicans are going to win in Georgia. Joel Pollack said the danger in Georgia is that Democrats are highly motivated to win the two Senate seats that will make all their radical socialist dreams possible, while Republicans are struggling to find the motivation to defend a constitutional democracy in which they are slowly losing faith. That's right. It's a great point. But I'll make it worse for you. On January 6th, Alex Jones will be in D.C. and he called for 10 million patriots to occupy D.C. in a peaceful demonstration. 10 million, he says, will be there. Where are these people coming from? I have to imagine that many of these people will be coming from Georgia. Not all of them, but a decent amount. Georgia's not that far from D.C. I mean, relative to, say, California. How many people on January 5th, the day of the Georgia runoff, will get in their truck, get in their cars, pack it up and say, we're going to spend the next couple of days in D.C. for a big protest? And you know what it is? On January 5th, that's the Georgia runoff. That's when the votes got to come in. Now, they could vote early for sure. But how many of these Republicans are going to leave Georgia on the 5th saying, I don't care about Purdue. I don't care about Loeffler. I care about Donald Trump. And what is more important, being in Georgia to vote for two Republicans that you don't actually care for? Without Trump on the ticket, many of these people aren't going to bother to vote. Then you add in the fact that many of the people who might vote because they're culture warriors or they're politically active, they'd rather be in D.C. January 6th is that day. Republicans are not likely to just drive up at 2 a.m. from Georgia to D.C. No, they'll come the day before. Maybe they'll go and vote first, for sure. And maybe they'll then go and make their way to D.C. Or maybe I think we'll actually see a lot of Republicans saying, I don't care. Loeffler and Purdue. So what? Some Trump supporters have already called for sacrificing the Senate so that we move, we're forced to move forward in some kind of accelerationism, I suppose. Why would I then assume the Republicans will, will keep control of the Senate to give Mitch McConnell power? Why would Trump supporters want to give Mitch McConnell power? Right now, Donald Trump is talking about vetoing the National Defense Authorization Act, the bloated spending bill for uh, the de- de- defense bill, unless we get Section 230 repealed. Mitch McConnell, Senate to return December 29th for potential Trump veto override vote. McConnell defies Trump. McConnell teams up with Democrats to defy Donald Trump. Why would Trump supporters want to help him be the the, the majority leader in the Senate? They won't. If anything, they're going to be laughing as they wave bye bye, knowing Purdue and Loeffler are going to lose. 
because it means McConnell loses power and the Republicans will get some comeuppance. You know, it's funny at the RNC and the DNC in 2016, where did we see the Democrats protest? Not the RNC, not against Republicans, against Democrats. Why? Because the vehicles for power are the establishment political parties. Right now, Trump supporters, well, they know they don't like Democrats. And so their only option is demanding of Republicans to help them in their fight. But like I said, Republicans don't do that. The Democrats will propose burning down the kitchen and Republic, uh, burning down the house. And Republicans will say, just only burn down the kitchen. So then Republicans get especially mad. I'm sorry, Trump supporters are especially mad at the Republican political class saying, you didn't defend us, so we want you gone. If they're already losing to the Democrats, why bother propping up those who won't fight for you? And that's why I think nobody's going to want to hand Mitch McConnell anything. Trump directed email criticizes McConnell, including polling graphic sent to some House Republicans. The odd communication was obtained by NBC News. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, Trump was saying that he helped McConnell win. That McConnell was actually doing poorly until Trump started pushing, you know, pushing McConnell out and, you know, his name and giving him a bump and trying to help him win. Probably true. For all the reasons I just, I just explained, Trump supporters don't care for the Republican Party. So what happens next? January 5th is the next most important day. In between then, we may see something the Supreme Court might reject Trump's you know, latest claims, which se- seems extremely likely. On the 5th, a Georgia runoff will happen. And we'll learn, presumably, whether or not the Democrats will take control of the Senate. The best they can muster is a tie, but Kamala Harris as vice president would control the Senate, in which case everything I said gets so much worse. If Trump supporters know that they can lose two seats in Georgia, creating a tie in the Senate, but if Mike Pence is vice president, they win, why bother fighting for Purdue and Loeffler? Trump can come out and say it. Vote for Purdue and Loeffler to keep the Senate in the hands of the Republicans. Why? That'll empower Mitch McConnell. How about this? You let Georgia fall. Then you go to D.C. on the 6th to fight for Trump so that when Trump wins the presidency, Mike Pence is the tiebreaker and Republicans do control the Senate, but with a weakened Mitch McConnell. Doesn't that make more sense for Trump supporters? Now, I'll tell you the big problem. It's not going to happen. I don't think Trump is going to successfully overturn this, but I would I'd be willing to bet personally that a Trump supporter would rather bet on Trump in D.C. than on the GOP in Georgia. If you gave the average Trump supporter a choice, be on the ground, cheering, chanting, rallying and voting for Loeffler and Purdue or Make your way to D.C. to cheer and chant and occupy D.C. with Alex Jones and many other conservative personalities in defense of Trump. They will pick Trump. Because it, because it makes sense, even even if they lose Georgia, if Trump wins, they break the tie. Now, if they lose Georgia and then Joe Biden becomes president, then Democrats are control of everything. They take control of everything and then they'll start stacking the Supreme Court and they'll have every branch of government. Should be fun, I guess. But ultimately, does any of this real this, this, this stuff really matter when the political establishment is in tatters and is crumbling? I don't know. I think in four years, it's going to get really, really, really tense. Maybe sooner. The rate of exchange of information is extremely rapid. And these past four years have been the most dramatic escalation in the culture war we've ever seen. States lining up against states. Newt Gingrich saying he won't recognize Biden. I think it'll get spicy. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up tonight, 8 p.m. live, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL. We're going to have a really, really big show with a great guest, someone actually involved, I believe, involved in these lawsuits. Apparently has something really big to say, so we'll see. Check it out at youtube.com forward slash Timcast IRL. Make sure you subscribe, and I will see you then live at 8 p.m. tonight.